And welcome to worship at Rock of Ages Lutheran Church here in Wildwood, Florida. On this, the fifth Sunday in the season of Pentecost, and it also happens to be the birthday of our nation. The 4th of July holiday is this weekend, and so we pray that you are able to recognize in some way, celebrate it in some way, even though we are not free to move about as we would choose. Nevertheless, the freedoms that were afforded us by our forefathers in this great nation have not been weakened by this virus. We will emerge stronger. We will, because of the spirit of the American people, continue to be the light that shines on the hill for the world. So it's my delight to be able to welcome you to this worship service this morning. And also I should point out that uh, we have not officially opened our worship services to the public. However, we have invited members of the Rock of Ages congregation to attend this recording service so that we can begin to have an experience of what it will be like to have people returning to our space. Have we considered all of the necessary safety considerations? Will people abide by the rules that have been set? And as we have that experience and people feel comfortable with uh, being here, we anticipate that this experience will grow. I'd also uh, point out to you today that we are doing something different, and that is what we call spiritual communion. Spiritual communion is a time-honored method of recognizing the Holy Communion, but without the actual distribution of the elements. It's a process by which people are able to spiritually connect to the table, to the altar, to the elements, but by remaining safe and not ingesting elements that have been handled by someone else. And so I invite you at home to participate by gathering up whatever you find appropriate, crackers, bread, wine, juice, and at the appropriate time, uh, you are invited to go ahead and commune among yourselves in your homes. Uh, I'd also say to you that we continue to offer to you uh, weekly uh, devotionals every morning that you can find on our YouTube or Facebook channels. And we invite you to tune in to start your day with God's word. And also, if you're interested, we do offer a Bible study on Thursdays via Zoom. And in order for you to participate, all we need is an email from you directed to Rock of Ages Lutheran at gmail.com and say you'd like to participate and you'll get an invitation for that. So with that, please hear our gathering music as we set our hearts before the Lord. I bring you a word of God's peace and invite you to share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. 
our gathering hymn this morning is mine eyes have seen the glory and i know that you know it so feel free to open your windows at home and beller it out celebrate the birthday of our country <laughs> of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and before one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly passion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so it is with joy that as a called and ordained minister in the Church of Jesus Christ, that I remind all of us here today that our sins have been forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power. Create in us new hearts. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our praise song this morning is, O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
Open your hearts now to hear God's holy word. Our first reading today is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. And the preface, the coming messianic king will inaugurate an era of disarmament and prosperity. Because of God's covenant with Israel, the people are designated as prisoners of hope. And the reading, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter, and the preface. Life, captive to sin, is a catch-22 existence in which we know good but do not do it and do things we know to be wrong. Through Jesus Christ, God has set us free from such a futile existence. And the reading. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing, God, nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the gospel writer Matthew. Jesus chides the people who find fault with both the, his ministry and, and that of, of John the Baptist, and, and he thanks God that wisdom and intelligence are not needed to receive what God has to offer. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance, wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son, <clears throat> the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, please have a seat now and let's, uh, let's uh, discuss a little bit about what is intended in this scripture for us this morning. You know, it's about yokes, yokes, something that we're not all that familiar with anymore, except in a, a figurative sense. Yet Jesus, we all know, is uh, deemed to have been a carpenter, and as such, he made yokes. In fact, he was considered a master yoke maker. If you consider the importance of yokes in Jesus' time, those were the mechanism by which field animals were yoked together so that work could be done. And it was extraordinarily important in the, that the correct size of yoke be created. So people brought teams of oxen to Jesus' carpentry shop, and he measured them, and he rough cut the yoke stock. And then he spent about a week crafting them, and people came back so that Jesus could make careful, final adjustments so that the yoke would fit comfortably on the animals. Well, because we don't even see yokes today or understand them all that well, um, we have to look figuratively at what our yokes are. Do you have burdens that sometimes seem entirely too heavy to bear by yourselves? Jesus says to us, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy. Well, the, the yoke that Jesus invites us to take is indeed an easy yoke to bear. So don't be misled by the word easy, because easy in the Greek meant well-fitting, well-fitting. His yokes were always designed for two you know, there are yokes that were made for one, but they were punitive yokes. They were applied to prisoners. They were used to um, confine someone to a, a post or whatever. But this is not the kind of yoke that Jesus is talking about. There are three things that I, I would like us to leave today from this scripture uh, about this burden-bearing Christ, this yoke-making Christ. The first one is that Christ sets us free. I'm sorry, uh, the first one is, is that um, Christ sets us free from the burden of sin, the burden of sin. Does it feel sometimes like sin is a burden? Does it feel sometimes as though you are dragging with you something that is impossibly heavy to bear on your own? Well, um, sin is that way. When sin gets a hold of us, when sin gets upon our shoulders, it weighs us down. It blocks out all the other positive aspects of life. It causes us to stay focused on the negative. So Jesus says, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy. But he also says, I will set you free. Our worship today and every Sunday begins with a confession. And that is a figurative way of us releasing the burden of our sin to Jesus Christ. When we ask for God's forgiveness, when we come into worship, we are asking that he take from us the burden of our sin. And it never fails, he does. Each and every time, he does. Every day is a blank slate. Every day, we will have failed the day before, but Christ once again lifts the burden of our sin. 
The second thing that I want us to share this morning is that he relieves us from the burden of self-righteousness. The burden of self-righteousness. Have you ever thought of self-righteousness as a burden? Isn't it hard to think that you're always right and that everybody else is always wrong? Isn't it a burden to see the current situation that we're living in where there are a very fractionated population, some who believe that the wearing of masks is ineffective and that social distancing is some kind of a political statement. And you may not agree with that, and you think you're right. They think they're right. That's a heavy burden to bear, this burden of self-righteousness. Only Christ can bear righteousness. It's not ours to bear. <clears throat> we seek it, we long for it, but only Christ is righteous. We can model this righteousness as Christians if we will do something that I have espoused for years and years, and that's to live the marks of discipleship, to live as a disciple uh, should live. And, and that means that we should pray daily, regularly. We should worship as often as possible. We should read the Holy Scriptures. We should serve others in ways small and large. And we should re relate to them, care about them, be a friend to them, be concerned about them. And we should be generous. We should give so that others' burdens might be lightened. Yeah, be being a Christian can be a burden. Wouldn't it be easy if we didn't have to pay attention to all of the things that we're called to be and do as Christians and just kind of run amok and do whatever we want, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas kind of mentality? I don't think we would find happiness in that because when we are self-serving, when we only focus on our own needs, interests, wants, and desires, that will become tiresome at some point. You know as well as I do that true satisfaction, true feeling of doing something worthy is when you do something for someone else, when you help bear their burdens, when you model Christ's yoke-carrying, burden-bearing behavior. And the third point that I want to bring up is that Christ relieves us from the burdens of sin and righteousness so that we can be free to do the real work that he has called us to, and that is bearing the burdens of someone else. All of the Old Testament law of Moses and the prophets is fulfilled in one saying, and that is, you are to love one another as Christ has loved you. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older and I just need things to be simple, but when I think of the complexities of the world, the burdens that we bear, when I think of the conflicts of the world, the difficulties that surround us, when I think about scripture, and I've stumbled through it as many times as, as uh, any of you have, yet I don't fully understand it all. But when I read this one thing, you are to love one another as Christ loves you, is the whole deal. It's the bottom line. We don't need to go any further than that. If we love everybody as Christ loved us, it wouldn't be easy, but at least it's a direction that we are called to take. It's not easy to love those we disagree with. It's not easy to love our enemies. It's not easy to love people that hold different political views than ours. Yet that's exactly what scripture calls us to do. And so you see, we can lift our burden. We can 
share the yoke of our difficulties with Christ because he offers it to us. He comes alongside us and says, my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. He finally says to us, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You feel as though you're burdened? You feel as though you're weighted down by the problems of the world? by the COVID-19 virus, by the social unrest, by the economic recession, and it goes on and on. Yes, all of those things can bring us down. And if we focus on them, they will succeed in burying us. But, as I believe, if you focus on Jesus Christ, the hope of the resurrection, then we will understand what it means that his burden is light. May God bless you as you contemplate how you will lighten your load by yoking yourself to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me now as we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now the prayers of our church called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church, sustain us as we share your word, embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lead us to living out the gospel by working through the differences, practicing reconciliation and forgiveness. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices Maintain our faith through these turbulent times. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Do not let us be greedy in the use of all that God has provided us. Show us the ways to share our bounty with those less fortunate here in our own communities and across the globe. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. We pray for the nations today, especially as we celebrate our freedoms won through the sacrifices of many. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Give a voice to those feeling forgotten and overlooked. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your guidance, Lord, in creating a faithful and loved-filled life for ourselves and others. Let us rely on the light that God provides for us and the principles of our faith as direction in our lives. Keep our paths straight. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed, especially those struggling with COVID-19 and those on our prayer list. We lift their names to you and those we also mention out loud are in our hearts at this time. Okay. Margaret. 
Riley, Brad. Renew the strength of caregivers, medical personnel, first responders, those in our armed forces. Ease their burdens. Give them hope for a brighter tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize our volunteers, our church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways of how your love transforms our lives. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in a new life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 At this time, you're invited to consider your continued support of the Ministry of Rock of Ages. Whether your donations are by check or electronic, we are grateful for your continued support, and we thank you for your faithfulness. Let us pray. People, or God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For those of you at home who have gathered together some semblance of bread and wine, please gather them now. You know, it was 2,000 years ago when people had gathered habitually for a major feast, a Passover feast in Jerusalem. And when they gathered, they celebrated their freedom from, from Egypt. When Jesus brought his disciples on this last Passover Sunday for himself, he told them, I want you to go find us a place where just we can gather. And so the disciples found an upper room a private place, and Jesus gathered with them. And they expected to have a meal, as they had always had, generation upon generation. Jesus wasn't going to disappoint them, but he did have a meal that would change their lives and the lives of everyone in the world. And so it was on the night in which he was betrayed by one of them that Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it for them to eat saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then as they were used to doing, there were four servings of wine. And on the fourth serving of wine, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Well, we cannot physically partake of the bread and the wine. We can ingest, inject ourselves into the moment. We can experience 
the fact that Jesus is gathered with his disciples. He's gathered with you and I right now. And he has offered us this life-changing meal that when we take Jesus' body and blood into ourselves, we become committed to his ministry for all of our lives. And so this opportunity that we have this morning to remind ourselves of this central part of our Christian faith, I hope will connect you, at least in part, to what is so important about our beliefs as followers of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we join our voices together, reciting the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for taking time today to join us in this time of worship. I hope that you felt the presence of Christ in your life. I hope that you feel his peace. I hope that you feel that your burden has been lightened by yoking yourself to the assurance of Jesus Christ. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. We invite you to join us again next week as we bring you God's holy word. And now receive these final words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing song today is Shine, Jesus Shine. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.